Thank you, Judy. Good morning. And welcome to worship on this 19th, 19th Sunday after the day of Pentecost. Um, uh, already a busy morning here at Trinity Lutheran. Our church um, council at, um, met at meeting on your behalf at 7.30 a.m. And we were talking at council this morning about how beautiful the sunrise was today. So we give thanks for the gift of our council and for their leadership. And we look forward now to have the community gathered, um, both online and here in the sanctuary, as we gather as God's people, the church, um, the body of Christ, to be together, to hear God's word, be lifted and transformed by that life-giving word, to sing God's praises, to share and lift one another up in prayer, and to hear Christ's invitation to come to the table, to eat and to be fed, and then to be joyful as God sends us out to be a blessing to all that we meet. So welcome to our worship service today. I want to invite you following our worship service today downstairs to our fellowship hall. Today we are excited to um, honor our 18 confirmants. Um, two weeks from today they will be celebrating the rite of confirmation, also known in the Lutheran Church as the affirmation of baptism. So we want to honor them today with a brunch, and we want to say a special thank you to Welka, who is presenting the, the, the brunch for our confirmands today. Um, just a, a reminder um, for a couple of announcements. This Wednesday, because it is MEA, there are no WAS after school supper confirmation class. Those will resume in the following week. The only exception is on Thursday and Friday, our 10th grade confirmation students will be going on retreat to Good Earth Village. So our prayers for that retreat, we're excited for that to happen. It's always a powerful experience for confirmation students to, to have a chance to be on retreat at our wonderful Bible camp and also have that time together um, to have faith and fellowship and also to share their faith papers as they prepare for the rite of confirmation. The rest of the announcements I leave for you to read at your leisure. And at this time I invite you to please stand and you can turn in your hymnals to page 94 and we will begin our service with the word of forgiveness and confession and forgiveness. Page 94. We begin our worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us together sing our gathering hymn, number 820. And we will sing verses 1, 3, and 4. O oh, Savior, precious Savior.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. O Lord God, tireless guardian of your people, you are always ready to hear our cries. Teach us to rely day and night on your care. Inspire us to seek your enduring justice for all this suffering world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. First lesson is from Genesis 32. The same night Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. And the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, 
but Israel. For you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jake called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Penuel, limping because of his hip. The psalm will read responsively. Psalm 121. I lift my, up my eyes to the hills, from where is my help to come? The Lord will not let your foot be moved, nor will the one who watches over you fall asleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The Lord will preserve you from all evil and will keep your life. The second reading is from 2 Timothy, Timothy 3. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction and for training in righteousness so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message, be persistent whether the time is favorable or unfavorable, Convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves the teachers to whom their own desires, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, Carry out your ministry fully. Here ends the reading. Okay, I'd like to invite all the second graders and their parents or guardians or whatever adult might be with them today. Come on down, Randy, and I have your Bibles for you. This is your pile. It's grandparent. Today we celebrate a special event, a milestone event, the presentation of Bibles to you, our second graders. The Bible is a very special book that tells the story of how much God loves us. The members of our church are pleased to present you, our children, with these Bibles. We hope that you will use your Bible to understand more about God and what he wants for us. Parents, 
It wasn't so long ago that you stood with a baby in your arms and made a sacred promise to God on behalf of your child to lead your child in the way of the Christian faith. Water sealed this covenant. Today you will place in your children's hands the Holy Scriptures. You stand again before God to renew and fulfill this pledge. Before we present the Bibles, we will ask you to recommit to the promises you've already made to God on behalf of your child. And so, in the presence of God, this congregation and your child, will you continue in the promises you made to God in baptism? If so, please answer, yes, with the help of God. Members of Trinity Lutheran Church, Will you assist these parents by caring for these children, encouraging them to study the word of God, sharing your understanding of the story of faith, and giving them the opportunity to benefit together in Christian learning and development? If yes, if so, please answer yes with the help of God. Parents, please place the Bible in your child's hands. And it's fine if it's already there. <laughs> you have received the word of God. Learn its stories and study its words. Its stories belong to us all, and these words speak to us all. They tell us who we are. They tell us that we belong to God and to one another, for we are the people of God. Let us pray. Loving God, we give thanks for the Bible, your gift to be used for our learning. Help us to hear these words, understand them, and be changed by them, so that in your time we may become wiser, more loving, and more active followers of the way of Jesus. Amen. Congratulations, second graders and parents, guardians. Let's recognize these young people with a round of applause. And you may return to your seats. Thank you. I invite you to please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and to not lose heart. He said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while, he refused. But later on, he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. 
Many years ago now, it was my first year out on the East Coast, and as I was out driving all along the interstate, or the throughway, as they call them on the East Coast. And that's when it happened. Something caught my eye that I hadn't seen before. It was a truck, a big delivery truck. But it wasn't the truck itself that captured my attention, but rather what was painted on the side of the truck that I found so incredibly fascinating. It had on the side in big, bold, black and red letters, G period, O period, D period. As a Midwesterner, I have never encountered a God truck before. So naturally, I was pu pretty curious. I was even tempted to take it as a sign because I had been praying for some time about a matter. And this did seem to be one of those signs that you just couldn't miss. However, I was soon to discover that it was not a sign, but a, the initials of a common delivering company. And the letters G-O-D stood for General Overnight Delivery. And the many years I lived out in New York, I would encounter not just one, but many such delivery trucks throughout that area. I share this experience with you because it seems to me to be a symbol of sorts of how we sometimes have a mistaken view of the gift of prayer. The God truck provides general overnight delivery. And when we take the time to pray, don't we often secretly believe that when we ask, it should just simply appear that easily and that efficiently without seeming much effort on our part? Today's lessons reveal a very different side of prayer. We begin in the first reading that Harry shared with us, with Jacob, a very human, a very flawed individual who just like most of us knew what it meant to not receive answers right off the bat. He knew, especially in today's reading, what it meant to have to wrestle for things, to wait through the long night to receive an answer. But on the good side, he also knew to persist and to not back down. And in today's first reading, he sure didn't back down, did he? Not from facing his own brother, not even from wrestling with God himself. Now that takes faith. It takes faith to look difficulties straight in the eye and yet refuse to let them beat you. Jacob's example is a reminder to each of us that prayer is no easy thing. It must be wrestled with, striven with, and yet the blessings indeed are there, as are the God who is willing to enter into that long night with us, just waiting to bestow identity and blessing, waiting to change and transform lives. And that's exactly what God does in this story. But there's also another side to the story, another side too to prayer that so often we overlook. Oftentimes when we talk about prayer, we think or refer to it as only something that is between me and God. In other words, we tend to think of prayer as primarily a personal thing. But in today's first reading, there is so much more to this story than meets the eye. In this story, Jacob has deceived his father and cheated his brother out of his rightful inheritance. At the same time, he has also been locked in a battle with his crafty father-in-law, in which he had to work extra years in order to win not just one wife, but two. And with that background in mind, we enter into today's first reading as Jacob begins his long wrestling match. And he does this as he is on his way returning to face his brother, the one 
whom he had cheated. And it is from this experience, this story of wrestling with God and being changed, that Jacob becomes Israel and begins a whole new life. After today's story, he does have the courage to keep going on his journey. He is reconciled with his brother. And later on in Jacob's story, he will even go on to condemn his own sons for treating others unjustly. And so you see, prayer is not just a personal thing. It is always a relational thing. It has profound effects on the relationships that we have around us. Therefore, when we pray, it always has an effect on the society and on the world around us. There is no such thing as private prayer. Today's gospel reading for today also makes the same point. When Jesus is teaching his disciples about prayer in this parable, He uses an example which emphasizes the social justice implications of prayer when he shares the parable of the unjust judge and the widow. Prayer will change each of those characters in different ways, but it will change them. For the widow, it will transform her into someone with a voice, someone who isn't afraid to stand up and fight for the justice that God has promised. And for the judge who should know better, it will also transform him into doing acts of justice, even though he does it for the wrong reasons. But in both cases, prayer changes people and prayer led to action. Prayer led to a changed world. It is far removed from a privatized idea of simply time between me and God. The second thing that both lessons highlight is the reality of injustice and the need for persistence. In the first reading, Jacob has to wrestle all night long in order to grab hold of that blessing. And even then, the reunion with his brother did not take place in just one moment. It required more effort. He had to continue the journey. And in the gospel reading, the widow wasn't successful on her first visit to go and see the judge, was she? No, in fact, it wasn't until she had bugged him over and over and over again that she was able to wear him down with her constant attention. There is a wonderful movie uh, many years ago now that reminds me of today's gospel parable. The movie is called The Shawshank Redemption. And in this movie, Tim Robbins was imprisoned for a crime that he did not commit. And rather than spending time feeling sorry for himself, he decided to use his time wisely. And so he decides to spend his time in prison writing for funds from the state government, hoping to build a library for the prison inmates. In that movie, he wrote one letter every day for six long years. Six years. After six years of letters, he finally gets what he had been requesting. And do you know what his reply was when he received the news that he was getting what he had asked for? To me, this is the best part of the whole movie. He said, well, it only took six years. And so from now on, I will send two letters a week instead of just one. That's the kind of persistence that Jesus is talking about. That refusal to give up or to give in. It means learning not to take no for an answer. The widow, like Jacob earlier, was someone who understood that. May we be quick to learn that too. Faith isn't for the faint of heart. It takes courage, fortitude, persistence, and the ability to keep on keeping on 
even when you seem to encounter obstacle after obstacle. For those of you who, like Jacob, have ever spent a night wrestling in the dark, ever spent a long night wondering why your prayers haven't been answered, ever, like the widow, taken time to wonder whether justice would ever be accomplished, these stories remind us to take heart. For the very one here who seeks to teach us about prayer is the very answer of God to all of our prayers in the face of his son, Jesus. For like Jacob, Jesus too would spend his night, a long night, in Gethsemane praying. And like the widow, Jesus too would have faced injustice. And he had to have wondered at that injustice if the dawning of Easter would ever come. But in all of these stories, the faithfulness of God is very clear. God has answered, and God continues to answer prayer. The God of Jacob, the God of Israel, is still the God of widows and orphans, the God who answers you and me. And that God will come when the time of wrestling is over and the beautiful dawning of a new day has come. And with that day will come our new identity, the gift of God's mighty blessing, and indeed, a whole new world. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us sing together our hymn of the day, hymn number 790, Day by Day.
I invite you to please stand as you are able, and together let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now in gratitude and with humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all that God has made. Gracious and loving God, today we pray for all the baptized that they might become skilled in compassion and grace and equipped to share the good news. Grant your followers persistence in proclamation and in the gift of prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, today we pray for air and sky, clouds and sun, that they might provide rain to parched land and relief to flooded ground. Renew and restore all places of your creation which are in need of your healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray today for judges, juries, and all who work in the judicial system. Help them to desire wisdom, to seek truth, to rule with fairness, and have the courage to do what is right. Eliminate oppression and injustice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Savior, today we pray for all who are lonely, especially those who have newly arrived, or who are facing um, a sentence of illness, or who have no family. Lord, we pray for those who are in special need of your healing. Today we lift up before you Arlen and Sharon, Russ, Cheryl, Dale, and Tom, Lord, in your mercy, hear our care. Gracious God, we pray for all who have taught us faith and who now find rest in your heavenly peace, that we remember and give thanks for these saints who shared the gospel through word and through deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now with grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and our silent prayers unto you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. And at this time, we continue our worship service with the offering of our gifts and our tithes.
Please stand. Oops. Thank you. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, the table is ready and all are welcome. You may be seated and our ushers will direct you forward. Today, Holy Communion will be by intention. Please take the bread and dip it into the wine. Um, at this time, we invite our community assistants to please come forward to the altar first. <coughs> The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. You guys will stand on that side.
I invite you to please stand. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. His peace be with you. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing together our sending hymn number 824. This is my father's world. <laughs> 